So as Biagio said, hello, my name is Matt Lowry. I've been working here at ECS Digital for about three years. Two of those years has been at News UK to help facilitate the Times deliver their website. Now, as today is a hands-on session, you will be needing to connect to our remote machines via SSH. First of all, have you all got SSH clients installed on our machines? Important question, yeah? yeah. <laughs> Just to check. And have you all got our bits of paper as well with our account details on there? Just give me a sign that it's okay. Yeah? Awesome. Excellent. So I also recommend as well to either clone this repository or go to it in the browser. You'll also find this URL uh, in the comments of the DevOps meetup, if that's easier for you. And that will allow you to follow along the hands-on session a bit later. So again, just give me a sign when you're all good to go. <coughs> <laughs> yeah, it should be on your bit of paper as well for the account details. Yeah, so everyone's got their own animal. Okay, that's a mistake. Ignore that. Go by, go by that. That's a mistake. Yeah. Yes, okay, so, I so I'll hop down. Dingo, that one. Yeah, exactly. And it's playground at Dingo. Is that okay? I'll come over. <laughs> yeah. Dot com. That should get you in. That's absolutely fine. Everyone good? Need a hand? Yeah, Marie, can you help her out, please? Uh, so you go by a putty. You'd go by. How are we all looking? We're in. Everyone in? So you should see EC2 if you've got in, okay? Okay, I'm going to push on. That's all right. So as with all engineering, let's start off with a problem that we're trying to solve. And to demonstrate that problem, I'd like you all to play a game of spot the difference. So I've taken two images here of the Times headline. And I'd like you to tell me what's different about these two images. Uh, I spot it, so there's a little gray bit. It's too good. <laughs> 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 so, <laughs> so Sam said to me I should use Where's Wally for this, um, but I thought that was too mean. Uh, you're exactly right. So we've got these, uh, these little gray bars. I didn't see the other ones. Um, so let's imagine now that we're looking at the whole, the whole page and how much harder it is now to find behind that bug. Using you know, traditional testing strategies, what kind of approach would you or might you might take to, to catch this bug? Uh, visual and visual testing. <laughs> Absolutely. What else might you use? Uh, I wouldn't use manual because anybody looking at this every day, would they stop it? I don't know. I yeah. So odds will be, either your Sam's right, you'd probably use manual regression testing. So someone will come along, look at the page, uh, interpret it, and then verify that it's correct. Uh, obviously, in today's you know, development practices, it's not great. We want to try and avoid getting away from that manual interpretation and look more towards an automated way of testing. 
So something you might have adopted is something a bit more like this, which um, we've actually pulled out of an existing proprietary test framework that I've worked with. And this uses Selenium to go onto a web page, inspect the DOM, find an element, and then assert that a particular attribute is present on that element. So what are the kind of issues you might experience with doing something like this, do you think? Absolutely. Yeah, exactly that. Anything it's else? It's just only very like the code, but the code might be correct. Mm. You, you cannot test exactly everything across the page. Right? Yeah, e exactly, right? So to test in that way to find this sort of bug, there's going to be so much overhead, and you're going to need so many of those sort of tests to inspect the whole web page. And it's just not going to be viable, uh, not to mention the overhead of doing all that uh, will be it's just insane. So what is visual regression? Now, I'm, ho um, I'm hoping that this image does a fairly good job at demonstrating what it is. And I'll walk you through it now. On the left hand side, we've got this baseline. And what a baseline is, is uh, how your site looks if it was visually correct. And that's been based on past recordings of using the tool. We've got this latest, and that's now how your site looks currently after a deployment. And then what that allows us to do is once we have those two images, is do the comparison between them, and then the tool will throw up any differences uh, that it finds. So you can see down here we've got a blue button followed by a red button, and then finally we've got a pink. So the pink is the tool showing to you that something's changed, and you now have to manually go ahead, uh, inspect this report, or whatever it might be, and verify if either the change is correct. If it is, then great. Then let's go ahead and update our baseline. If it's not, then that gives you the opportunity to, you know, to report that bug and get it dealt with. So visual regression is one of those tools that not many SDETs are aware about, but can be incredibly powerful when implemented correctly. Um, and I now like to talk to you about how to use it and make it as robust as possible. So as I said, we've quite a bit of experience using visual regression. And the most important thing for me is to make sure your application under test has got really re uh, repeatable state, that you have good ownership of the data. So a good example um, I can tell you about is uh, at the times we've created our own image server to sort of like have a mock image server that will then send to the site under test a repeatable image that we can then use. We've also done things, or we're looking at now actually, to have a fake ad server. Um, and we also have the ability to refresh our data set to a known data set. If your application has constantly evolving data or it's constantly changing, it's not going to be that great a tool for you. Does that make sense before I go on? Taking the nods as a yes. Cool. So to have a low amount of UI interaction, and what I mean by that is we don't want our visual regression tool to do a long checkout journey before taking the snapshot. And the reason why I say that is because we're using Selenium still under the hood, and Selenium by nature is a flaky tool. Um, so yeah, try and keep UI interaction to a minimum. I also recommend using the Docker images for Selenium. And the reason why I say that is because you take away all the complexity of managing your own Selenium instances yourself. The browser's all done for you, the drivers are all managed for you. Yeah, it's, it's, and uh, again, it gives you more repeatable state and finally, and we've made this mistake in the past, <laughs> looking at Coroth here, is to commit our images into our repository. And the reason why I say don't do that is that six months down the line of running this tool constantly and updating your baseline images, it will take half an hour to pull down your repository, which is the worst thing ever. Yeah. Uh, we actually had to rewrite our history completely to, to solve that problem. So some of the existing tools on the market. Now I'm only talking about the open source tool set. There are also paid tools such as Appy Tools and Percy. Um, I haven't used them personally, and they kind of provide you <coughs> visual regression as a service. If you guys have got experience using these tools, then I'd love to hear about it. Haven't used them personally, as I said. So originally, when we first started playing with visual regression, we used a tool called Wraith. And Wraith was a really great, robust tool for a long time. Did about 44 comparisons in around six minutes. Um, Wraith's downfall was that it only supported PhantomJS and uh, Slimer.js. And these are both headless browsers. And a real key principle for me about testing is you want to be testing your application as close to 
how the user interacts with the page as well. Um, these users are not going to be using these headless browsers. And actually, thanks to the browsers we base uses, a few minor bugs will slip through. Uh, these are mostly uh, cosmetic, but you know, working at the times, a huge amount of business value is placed on the how the site looks, and those bugs cause what cause rollbacks. So ultimately, the headless browsers uh, meant we were a retired Wraith. I have found out in the last week, as I did the presentation, Wraith now supports Chrome, although I haven't used it. It might be interesting to have a look at. So we migrated our test suites across to Backstop. Backstop is the industry favorite, as far as I'm aware. Um, we had a real hard time with Backstop. It's super over-engineered. It's got a very wide community. And I feel like it's got to the point now where it's just trying to do a bit too much. Um, some of the guys here will tell you, I think we spent about two weeks trying to get Backstop to be stable. Um, and we just couldn't do it, not to mention the build times were taking around 20 minutes to run which for me is unacceptable feedback. So after much frustration, we, uh, I think me and Cora sat down and we were thinking, how can we go ahead and you know, be our own version? Because it, it can't be that complicated in our own minds. So that's what we did. And we came up with our own tool called iSpy. So it's called iSpy. Um, originally, it was supposed to be pirate themed, hence, hence the A. Uh, I don't think that followed through through its entire development, but yeah, iSpy nonetheless. How does it work? So as I mentioned earlier, uh, the tool, it's a CLI tool, it uses Selenium behind the scenes, and it will just load up a page, take an image of that page, and we'll use that image for that comparison. Does that all make sense? Excellent, okay. So our main objectives for iSpy was to be super quick, uh, be very easy to interpret the results, and have a really short feedback loop for developers using the tool. It's a CLI app available on NPM, and in the last week, we had this huge spike, which I'm really happy about. Uh, it's like, you know, it's just shot up. Um, maybe it's for you guys preempting the meetup, I don't know. We also have the ability to have remote storage capability. So to solve the whole thing uh, with your images being committed into your repository, we now store the images on S3. If you guys don't know what S3 is, come and talk to me afterwards, and we'll go through it together. And how does it stack up to the alternatives? So as I said, backstop, not backstop, sorry. Wraith took about six minutes. iSpy takes 90 seconds to run 44 comparisons. So it's way, way quicker. And that's largely thanks to us using a Selenium grid to distribute the load of our tests. So this is an, an example of a full iSpy config. And I'll just give you a second to read through that. And these are all the sort of cool features that iSpy supports. What's the remote bucket name? Remote bucket. So that's to do with the S3 stuff, uh, which we don't cover in this hands-on session. But if you want to have a look at the repository, it explains it nicely. So some of my favorite uh, features is the ability to remove selectors. So say you have your, your site, and there might be like an advert or a carousel or something that's moving or dynamic. We have the ability to remove that selector before taking that snapshot, which is really useful and makes the page more static. We also have the ability to uh, wait for selector as well. And that allows you to explicitly wait for an element to be visible. So say you have a long, uh, so a large image loading at the bottom of a web page. We can wait for that to appear, and that's no problem at all. Uh, and also, finally, thanks to Marie Downhill. Question? Yeah, I would change the name, like, remove selectors, it's confusing, remove element. Remove. Then you obviously see a selector. That's a very good point. <coughs> Slightly misleading, I suppose. I will make a note of it. And to wait for element of your local selector. Yeah. yeah, that's an excellent point. Um, someone can create an issue for me, that'd be great. I want to make a PR. <laughs> or a PR, even better. If you want to do it yourself, fantastic. <laughs> uh, and then finally, the on ready script, and that will allow you to uh, you know, interpret, or sorry, not interpret, manipulate the DOM before or um, you know, click on a button before taking the screenshot. So that's it for the talk. Are we all excited to get hands on and see it in action? <laughs> yes. Okay, great. Um, I'm going to change my display to be mirrored. 
So as I said earlier, for this to work, you need to be on one of our instances. I should have somewhere, if I've done this correctly, which I haven't, of course. No, that is not it. So I'll just walk you through the infrastructure very quickly to show you what we have running on these machines. Um, we've got Nginx to serve our report when we see the report, and that's just on the domain itself. Uh, it's forbidden right now because the report does not exist. On port 3000, you will find uh, a little test application that I've created for the purposes of this demo. It's a fairly simple site. Um, I've got the show more. If you can click around a little bit. Say again. Zoom in. <laughs> How else do you zoom? Come on, plus. Yeah, sure. There you go. <laughs> yeah, we'll do. Uh, and then finally, we also have a Selenium grid running locally on your machine as well. So all dependencies are already good to go. All we have to do is just start using iSpy. So also, if you check out the repository that uh, I mentioned earlier, which is the DevOps 27 visual regression, you will find all the scenarios that we're going to go through, and you can go through at your own pace, uh, as well as some cheat sheets, CLI commands that you're going to use. And finally, there's also a survey link. So as always, we really want to have your feedback and learn how we can continuously improve these playgrounds. Is that big enough? Yeah. I think it's a bit bigger. I don't. Uh, we can change it quickly. I think we can do. It. <laughs> so just give me a shout when you're in a position where we can continue. <laughs> Nothing just yet, just SSH in and open up this um, repository to follow along with uh, the hands-on section. Uh, you said the Selenium grid is currently running. Yes. Is it only access to the module? No, no, so that uh, Selenium grid is running on your instance that you're connected to locally. Oh, okay. Yeah, so you've all got your own Selenium grid and you can all use it by yourself. It's all independent. So Yeah, so, um, so I've exposed the grid to the world. Yeah, to the whole world <laughs> for the purposes of it, if it's playgrounds. Usually you shouldn't do that, but it just makes it easier so you can see what's running um, and, yeah, a bit more interactive. So it's your domain. So it'll be your domain. And it'll be running on port 444. But that's not going to be important for you because it's all set up for you, just for your own awareness that it's there. Say again. If you wanted to get this running on your own. Yeah, you would. Yeah, you would. But I wouldn't recommend doing that because there's a lot of dependencies. Okay, am I okay to start with scenario one? Yeah. So as I said previously, all the scenarios can be found on that repository. And we're going to start with scenario one. So comparing the home page, probably a great place for any tester to start up. 
Can we all read that? Yeah. I'm seeing some of you squint. Yeah. <laughs> cool. So to start, let's just inspect what we've got on the machine. And to do that, we're going to change directory to our iSpy directory and just have a look at what's available to us. So I've already done most of the legwork just for the purposes of the presentation. But we have an iSpy config, that's the important one. And we've got some folders that contain, uh, will contain our images, our reports, and the scripts that we're going to use. So we have a look at the iSpy config. This is pretty much all you need to have to run iSpy. And all we're saying is that we're going to point to our folders, say to iSpy where our grid is, and our endpoint that we want to test. So that could be Google, it could be whatever it is. Yeah, this, this is the Snows array, and uh, what viewports we want to test at. So to start off iSpy, I'm going to copy this command, because I'm lazy. And then what this is saying is that iSpy snap, so like iSpy go and hit this web page, take your snapshots, and we're going to use the Firefox browser. So iSpy also supports Chrome, although we're not using it in this session. I'm going to go ahead and do that. So we validate the config's correct. It's going to go off, hit the cooking app URL, take an image. And then to verify that image exists, we can uh, do something like this. So if you in your browser, go to your domain, and then go slash latest, slash homepage large. Oh, that did not what I was supposed to do. You will now see that image appear. Okay. The what, sorry? The readme for the scenarios. Ah, so that's on the DevOps 27 visual regression repo. Is that what you're after? Yeah? Exactly that. So the first time you run iSpy, you have to go ahead and take your first set of images, and then we'll update the baseline, which we'll do next. And then that'll be your, you know, your baseline, how your site's supposed to look. We all got our first image. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Connection yeah. failed. Yeah, Wildcat, but that Okay, that's interesting. Have you got Wildcat? Yeah. Can I just see? Yeah. So I know that Nginx failed for a few of these machines. But we can hit 40,000. Yeah, so if that's. Yeah. Oh, sorry, if we just do that. Four, 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 four. Sorry. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, let's use a different machine. That'll be the easiest way. Yeah, yeah, sure. If it's working. I saw it earlier. Uh, Nginx. Yep. And that's just to verify that iSpy has gone ahead and taking that snapshot. Yeah, you have to use semantic. So we use all, so iSpy uses CD and it also publishes it itself. And for us to work out what version to publish to, you need to use semantic commits. <laughs> yes, <laughs> sorry. Um, we should probably create a contributing doc for iSpy. I don't think it exists right now. Sam, can you create an issue, please, for contributing? <coughs> Thank you. OK, 
Okay, are we all good to push on? I feel like we're ready. Are you okay to support? Cool. So now we have our first image. We want to update our baseline and make our latest image our baseline. Okay, and that's done by using the second command. So once we update our baseline, let's now imagine that we've had a deployment um, and we want to go ahead and take another snapshot of our site. So let's go ahead and do that now. So now that we have those two, those two images, the latest and the baseline, we can go ahead and run the compare tool, oh. um, which is iSpy compare. Now, for probably the majority of you, this would have passed. There might be a few of you where it's failed. I'm hoping it has failed for some of you because I have put in some uh, Easter eggs onto the site, which might mean it fails. Has it failed for anyone in the room? Awesome, at least two. <laughs> so when it fails, it will go ahead and create the report for you. If you now go to your domain for the guys who failed, you'll see the report being served to you. For those that haven't got it, it looks like this. <laughs> yeah, so if it passed, it won't create the report because that's a wasted effort on the tool. So you want it to be really quick. Um, so that's an example report. I'll walk you why it's failed now as well. Cool. So have a look at the report and try and tell me why it's failed. Oh, it passed. Oh, I thought you said it, it, it bust. <laughs> yeah, it's like one. It's like one every ten times. I think it is. Okay. So I've got an example here of how the site might render. And we can see that we have some dynamic content on the site. So this can represent anything. It can represent um, you know, an ad, dynamic content, a video, whatever it might be. Just something that's changed on the page. Uh, in this case, you know, it's a little, a little bug. So we want to go ahead and remove that because you know, we want to make our page as static as possible. Now, I'm not saying that we should remove bugs in, in production or you know, in <laughs> development, but just in this case, as an example, we want to go ahead and remove that. So the way we go ahead and do that is if we continue to scroll down, um, and this is why I've got the Vi help on the side here. We're going to use a tool, tool called Vi, which is like a Linux editor, which is slightly confusing for anyone who hasn't used it before. Um, but if there's people in the room who can help you if you uh, struggle with it. And we want to go ahead and add to our scenario this remove selectors to our JSON. <laughs> Have you managed to catch up? I don't know how that, I think it should be okay. I think it would depend on how it's been set up. I, don't, I didn't do the, uh, the permissions. <laughs> Is everyone comfortable using Vi? Yeah, awesome. <laughs> Yeah, soon to be remove element. You can probably just remove them from the from the remote and just re-push them again. That'd be probably the easiest way. 
Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, you could actually just change the p on the PR. You could just change your header to be like fix or and then code on. Of course, you want to show him. It might be the easiest way. How are we all looking? I think everyone's looking good. When it fails, oh, when it's a problem. <laughs> yeah, this is one of the issues of using Vi. It's so unclear when things are not looking good. <laughs> it's just, I, I can't stop. It's just the same thing, in my opinion. <laughs> it's, Vim's original, right? Is it, I thought Vi was the improved one. Yes. No, Vim is the improved one. Oh, no. What have I done? On a playground as well. <laughs> That's going in the, the year's highlights right there. <laughs> okay, so now we've uh, updated our config. <laughs> <laughs> we can now go ahead and resnap and then compare again, and that should make we make all of our scenarios pass. Uh, for those of you who have committed to the baseline the image with a bug, you will have to again update your baseline and make that one correct. Okay. So the next step is scenario two. I'm just saying everyone. No, you'll still see your tests pass. Yeah. But in theory, it might have gone wrong. It might have gone wrong. I probably should have increased the bug to show you every other time. But going to push through to scenario two and that is to starting to uh, increase our coverage and our confidence that our site's looking you know, correct against multiple breakpoints and to do this again it's a case of editing that same scenario and adding to the viewports array a new object uh, with a new label and a new width and that's all it is. So I'm really hoping that uh, this demonstrates how simple iSpy is to use. It, all it takes is a config file. Uh, it's just pure JSON. And it's just yeah, incredibly powerful based on what you can do with a config file.
You can also use Vim if you want to. That's also on the machine. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, VI doesn't exist anymore. VI actually is called Vim. Yes, it will do which VI will send you each user to Vim. Ah, oh, perfect. So it's the same thing. Even better. <laughs> Okay, so once we go ahead and add our new object to our array, we can go ahead and rerun the snap. And once again, because we have a new image, we have to again update our baseline. And then we can do the comparison again. Yeah, I know, <laughs> I know. <laughs> That's all I've been doing for the last week. <laughs> I, I, I actually don't think that JSON should be good one while it's following the speed that I will make it YAML and I will make it PR for it. Do you reckon it should be YAML? YAML, yeah. 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 It should have yeah. said multiple Yeah, there, that is something we had on, the, uh, on our list to do. JSON was meant to be used fast by programs and by programs fast by EIs. Mm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. If you if you fancy putting a PR together, that will be a, a welcome addition. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So that's because you're trying to do the compare, and you haven't updated your baseline first. So you have to run up, uh, update baseline first to create that new image. So what this does, yeah, exactly that. So when uh, Selenium opens the browser, it's going to resize the page to, to this specified width and then take that snapshot. Right, so again, you can do it in the same way as I showed you earlier, using clam. So we've got here the large image, and that's taking um, the scenario name and then followed by the viewport size. <coughs> so if we were to then view small, if I can spell small right, I haven't actually done it when I've done it myself. <laughs> but small would show for you. <laughs> Great. Have we all got passing scenarios? Okay, cool. So we're going to get slightly more complicated now. <laughs> just, just slightly. Scenario four is the bad boy. <laughs> <laughs> so scenario three is all about interacting with the page before your screenshots. So I'll walk you through on the site what we want to do. Oh no. So on the, on the site we have this show more button and we want our tool to go ahead, click this button and then take a snapshot of the whole page. Uh, now you can do this inside a whole new scenario or inside the existing scenario, it's up to you. But the way we do that is to link to a script, which you will find inside your scripts folder. I think it's called click. And this is just a bit of JavaScript that uh, uses the Selenium browser object to go ahead and click on an element. So for this scenario, you have to update both the script file as well as the the ice by config JSON. Yeah, you need to point it to the click JS file. Do you have to find the select 
the, uh, the selector should be shown to you inside scenario three. There you go. So it's show me more. And I'm going to get some more water, if that's OK. Well, <laughs> can I get some water? <laughs> <laughs> it's all down to you guys now. <laughs> You've got the scenarios. So I think something that I experienced when I was doing this scenario was it might fail for the reason that when you click on this button, it takes a while for it to, or the gradient might change. And so that gradient might cause problems between the two images. So you might need to have a weight in there as well if you're starting to see it fail. So if it fails, then great, have a look at the report interpret what it's saying to you, and um, we can put in a weight if we need to. Once again, how do I see the report? So just go to your domain, mm -hmm. and you should see it in, oh the, in your browser. On the, on the yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. So I think what's <laughs> happened is that it's taken the screenshot before it's finished expanding. Mm -hmm. So that's a good candidate for putting in a small weight to allow the page to fully render before the screenshot. <laughs> Basically pro. Yeah, so so you, you don't have to put it into you don't have to put it into your script. Mm -hmm. If you go to the, um, the README oh, for iSpy. Yeah. Which will be the Devil's Playground twenty seven. No, for iSpy you said. I know if, uh, either or that'll work as well. Mm -hmm. Oh no, sorry, I mean it's in yeah, I'm going to fork. Ah, okay. okay. Oh, <laughs> excellent. So if you scroll down, and you'll see an example config here, and you've got a weight there. So that's implicitly weight, and that should work. Hello. 
Yeah, so if you go to your browser and then go to your home page, so you can delete the latest and that will show you the report. Keep going. Keep it. Just to your root. Now you get the report. And uh, so I like this guy here as well. So what's happened is, is that as you've clicked, the screenshot's taken before this has finished expanding. So what you can do is add an, uh, an implicit weight which you'll see in the config uh, for iSpy, and add it to your scenario, and that will allow you to you know, take the, sn the snapshot after the page is finished loading. I have no idea how that's happened. So that's my <laughs> bad sight. <laughs> Okay, that's super weird. Yeah. We, we, we didn't go anything. Uh, Maybe. No, it was passing a while ago. And then oh, okay. yeah, yeah, it's weird how. Mm, so your baseline here isn't right. Yeah. So what? It's, it's loading a small image, yeah? Yes, yeah, it's loading a small image, but that's definitely my site being bad and not iSpy. <laughs> 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 yeah, because iSpy. So iSpy is saying to you it's wrong. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> which it clearly is. Yeah, oh, that's fine. Um, uh, So if you uh, have changed yeah, it, you now have like to update your baseline. Yeah. You did. If you just oh, update, update your baseline one more time. Yeah. And how long was your wait? Two seconds. Two seconds, okay, that's definitely yeah. enough. Update oh, baseline. So yeah. So you can mark it there, what's happening yeah. now is it's not it. Sorry, that's not something yours. Okay, that's interesting. And go back to the report again. Okay. And have a look at the differences again. thinking that would be. So it looks like the gradient is slightly different. So that somehow changed behaviour of the Well, no, so, 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 so it's all managed for you. Hmm. I'm surprised by that, because uh, we've, done, we've done the work. i put in some work to make sure this is robust. <laughs> that is surprising. So you can see the difference slightly. But again, that still suggests that the page hasn't finished loading before taking that snapshot. And if I look at your config. So you've got your weight here. And that's the large. Ah, so that's, that's the wrong um, weight, you need to have your weight down here. No, it should be in so, the that, so that's, that's for the on ready, so yeah, so it's, on, it's per scenario, not at top rate level. Oh, I'm <laughs> that's absolutely fine. <laughs> okay, hopefully, hopefully that sorts it out. Okay, how are we all looking? Are we uh, looking good? <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna ignore that. And uh, is it now working for you? Okay. Okay. It, did you update your baseline again? Are we all passing other than uh, this chap here? What have you done? Yeah, so that's just what we're talking about now. And it's because you need to have a weight as well. Is this with a weight? No, no, no. My yeah. So you need to introduce a weight as well. Because when you're clicking on that show me more button, the page expands. But as it's expanding, you're taking that snapshot before it finishes expanding. 
So on the scenario level, in that array, add an await as well, and that should solve it. <laughs> so there you go. Sorry, um, there's a, so I haven't put it in here, but if you go to the cheat sheets, you'll find it there. All, all good? Awesome. Okay. <laughs> so tense, like when everyone's using your own tool. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Okay, so hopefully we're looking pretty good, and we can start doing scenario four, which is the last scenario. I think everyone's still. To torture people, well, well, you have to finish scenario four, and then you can get your pizza. So the pizza's here. <laughs> but you can't leave until you get a passing test. <laughs> yeah, uh, to JavaScript? What, a timeout? Yeah, it Let me see your config. Let me see your config quick. I've changed it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. okay. We have extra weight here, and I will bring you with that. Okay, that's very strange. I wouldn't expect that. Yeah. Are we, are, are the, the, the same way? I mean, the dirty fix that I did at the moment. Yeah, set timeouts. Okay. 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 I'm sure. I'm sure. So it does the same thing yeah. on the other side. I'm, I'm, fairly, I'm fairly sure that it does the same thing on the <laughs> pair programming. Always a fan. Okay. Just doing it in the script. But we also do the same thing inside the tool. So when you do wait, it does the exact same thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm going to talk about scenario four now. I know, the, I know there's pizza here and everyone's getting uh, hungry. I, I certainly am. <laughs> so scenario four is all about using the crop to selector. So let's say, for example, your site isn't that static. This can be a good alternative or a workaround uh, to that. And what the crop to selector, which might be an element very soon, um, <laughs> allows you to, as it says, suggests, crop to the selector. So the menu button here, we want to take a screenshot and then just go and then compare just that, uh, just that element. Um, it's slightly complicated in its implementation to get it robust, but uh, it's down to you guys now to look at the scenario, read what it says, use the classes that are there, and if you're a, having a hard time with it, the answers are also on the scenario for help. And that will help you out. Um. <laughs> I know. The answers are there. If you want to cheat, you can cheat. What are you doing to my my my, my, my poor tool? Well, I have no idea what you've done to this site. I just I just opened the uh, console. I'm glad it's just you and no one else. Could you imagine? You can have a look at the sheet. You've done this yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
So, so something with this scenario, which makes it a bit complicated, is that when you click, sometimes the profile's highlighted and sometimes it's not. So to make it robust, you have to not only wait for it to appear, you have to also move your mouse off. <laughs> so it's not highlighted anymore. There is already a template click file for you as well inside scripts. I forgot to mention that, sorry. I'll come to you, I'll come to you. What's going on? It's a useful session. Is that the goal is like take a snap? Yes. Um, uh, update the config. Yeah, so you take a snap, update your baseline, yeah. and then you have to take another snap, and then you can do the comparison. Yeah, so that can edit the config so I can see failure. To see a failure? Yeah. It, has, it, has, it al has it always passed? It's always passing. Ah, oh, <laughs> so. Um, so to make it fail, what you can do is to remove the, so in your config, you've yeah. got the selector, uh, yeah. the move selectors. Oh, I see, okay. Yeah. So if you remove this line here, yeah. and it might take a few times, because it needs oh, to pull, it might it needs to pull through that bug. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but run snap a few times, yeah. and keep compa comparing it, and it will fail. And, idea, and then yeah. once you get that, compa uh, that failure, you can go into your, uh, uh, no, if you, if you view the report, you yeah, yeah. the report. Yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. I'm going to do yeah. Cool. It's a good one, yeah. <laughs> no problem. Uh, so yeah, this, this, this is the last one, by the way. Yes, hello. I'm just looking at the cheat sheet. Yes. So it says that the parcel selectors. Yes. <laughs> ah, so that's an example. That's not the actual selector. The selector you're interested in is on scenario four. Uh, so I've actually done the work for you, if, if you're interested. <laughs> um, on the scenario four, yeah, that one there. And then if you scroll down, it's oh. this one here. Oh, you still want Yeah. But yeah, obviously, if you were to do it yourself, you have to go ahead and inspect the DOM and figure it out. Yeah, so you would just remove the you would just remove the flickety flick and replace it with the one you want to have. How's it looking? Baseline didn't change. So that is because you haven't created a new scenario and you now need to update your baseline to pull that image in across. I think. I think the baseline. Have a look at the report. There we go. So now it's at the issue I was talking about earlier about how uh, the mouse occasionally hovers over this image. Mm -hmm. So what you need to do is move the mouse off the element so it's not selected anymore. Mm -hmm. And then once again, you have to update your baseline because that's currently wrong. Mm -hmm. um, and then the, the cheat sheet is on scenario four. That will show you how to do that mouse moving if, if you're interested. 
not that cheat sheet, but if you go on to uh, scenario four, and then you've got here, sorry, scenario four help, sorry, oh. and that will show you how to implement the the script to move off. How are we all looking? Fairly good. Are you done? Beautiful. So what we recommend is to always have your test code alongside the application code. That's what we always feel we should do. Um, we have our functional Selenium tests inside the same repository as our visual regression tests. Okay. Just a different folder. Put a different folder. Uh, and then you run it on two subpages. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yes, it can be. So it's just web based, but if you have web views in mobile, that's cool. Um, we have actually got a similar tool for React Native, but um, yeah, but not. I don't know, I'm looking cross. Like on, on the. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or, or, or just fix it. <laughs> How are we all looking? A lot of quiet people. <laughs> Sam, is it working for <laughs> you? Do you want to help other people yes. get, it get it across? Fix your site yet, Murray? No. Have you fixed it yet? No. The site. The site. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is it working? No. <laughs> 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 Can't find the crop to select. The crop to select. Yeah. 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 <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> 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 
course just smashed out in like five minutes. <laughs> Stressful. <laughs> I'm not sure what to suggest to you there. <laughs> I'm not sure if I can help you. <laughs> So we have to do Marie. I'm being told that the pizza's getting cold, <laughs> so I might wrap it up here if that's okay. We can continue with pizza. Yeah, you can continue with pizza, that's absolutely fine. But um, I, I'm now done speaking. <laughs> so, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>